Hey guys, welcome to another installment of All Things Mythology. Today we'll be looking at some of the most powerful gods in the Japanese mythos. It began with the inception of the deities Izanagi and Izanami by the primordial Kami. He charged them with the creation of the universe using a divine spear of immense power with which they carried out this task. They worked together in utmost harmony, eventually falling in love. Izanami proposed to Izanagi that they consummate their relationship. Izanami would become pregnant and give birth to deformed creatures, as it was considered Izanagi's role to propose in the ritual of the union. The next time around, Izanagi took the initiative and proposed. This time, Izanami would birth the god of fire, Kagutsuchi. Izanami died during childbirth and was taken to Yomi, the underworld. Unable to accept this fate, Izanagi travels to Yomi to free Izanami. And getting there, he realizes she had been corrupted, her divine purity lost, and she bared little semblance to the goddess he once loved. The goddess, a shadow of her former self, attacks her lover, forcing him to flee for his life. On escaping, Izanagi seals the entrance to the land of the dead for all eternity. These gods may sound familiar if you're an anime fan, as they were referenced in the popular anime series Naruto as distinct abilities. In the show, Izanagi granted its user the power to change his or her fate, a reflection of the god's effort to alter his reality. The major proponent of the technique being Danzo Shimura. Izanami, an illusory technique, functioned as the antithesis to this, trapping its victim in a time loop which could only be escaped when one accepted his fate. These techniques were unique to wielders of the ocular ability called the Sharingan. Other notable techniques were also inspired by deities in the Japanese cosmogony. Amaterasu, inextinguishable black flames which were said to burn as hot as the sun. Tsukuyomi, a technique which transported their victim's mind to another world, often depicted with a moon where the caster had power over time, space, and matter. Susano, a humanoid avatar made of chakra with remarkable offensive and defensive capabilities. Collectively, these were inspired by the three noble children, the offspring of Izanagi. They were born after Izanagi's return from Yumi. He'd considered himself unclean after visiting the corrupt domain. He proceeded to wash himself, birthing Amaterasu, who was born when he washed out of his left eye, the brightest of the gods. From his right eye, another remarkable god, Sukuyomi, was born, although bright, built in comparison to his sister. The last of the three, the impetuous Susano, came forth from his nose. Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun, was often seen with the moon god Sukuyomi, who would later become her consort. During this period, there was no distinction between night and day. Accounts of the Nihon Shoki tells of a feast prepared by the goddess of food, Okemochi, in which Amaterasu was represented by Sukuyomi. When he arrived, he saw all manners of delightful foods. Okemochi emerged from behind a stone with even more incredible servings. Intrigued, Tsukuyomi decided to spy on her, and he witnessed as she produced food from every orifice in her body. Appalled and disgusted, Tsukuyomi proceeded to slay the goddess of food and cast her body from the heavens. On reaching the earth, he caused all manner of vegetation to spring forth. Amaterasu, mad with rage on learning of what transpired, banished Tsukuyomi from her sight for all time. So where Tsukuyomi was, she would no longer be, creating night and day. Izanagi would then give his daughter, a magatama, a necklace with mystical jewels, and appoint her the ruler of the heavens. Tsukuyomi, the night, and Susano, the seas. Susano, jealous of his sister's domain and missing his mother, cried and wailed, causing the rivers to dry up and plants to wither. An angry Izanagi expelled him. 
as he could not fathom why his son would want to visit the filthy domain. Before leaving, Susan who ascends to the heavens to bid his sister farewell. The goddess of the sun, hearing thunder and sensing a storm, figured her mischievous and indomitable brother was around and dressed to meet him clad in armor. And spitting it out, she birthed three goddesses, Tagori Hime, Ichikishima Hime, and Tagitsuhime. Susano took the Magatama, chewed it, and spat it out, bringing into existence five male deities Ameno Oshihomimi, Ameno Hohi, Amatsu Hikone, Ikutsu Hikone, and Kumano no Kusubi. Amaterasu declared herself the winner as more gods were created from an item belonging to her. An enraged Susano destroyed his sister's rice fields, flayed the heavenly horse, which he then hurled at Amaterasu's loom, causing one of the weaving maidens to fall on her spear. A sad and furious Amaterasu hid in a cave, plunging heaven and earth into darkness. The vegetations died and yukai roamed freely. The gods, led by Omoikani no Kami, the god of wisdom, organized a party outside the cave where she hid. A mirror was hung outside, and the gods sang and danced. Curious, she came out of the cave and saw her reflection in the mirror. She was elated and decided to return to the heavens to illuminate the world once more. As punishment for Susano, it would be expelled with a divine expulsion. He came down from heaven to the land of Izumo, where he met a couple lamenting and distraught. They recounted to him the story of their seven daughters who had been devoured by the eight-headed serpent Yamata no Orochi. Their last daughter was to be taken as well. Sympathizing with them and enamored by the girl's beauty, promised to protect her. He transformed her into a comb and hid her in his head. To defeat the monster, he got it drunk on eight barrels of sake, one for each of its heads. He then proceeded to behead the monster, and within it found a magnificent sword, Kusanagi no Surugi, which he presented to his sister Amaterasu as a reconciliatory gift. Amaterasu would later bequeath the sword to Ninigi, her grandson, alongside Yata no Kagami and Yasakani no Magatama the Yata mirror and the Magatama beads respectively. Collectively, they would become the Imperial Regalia of Japan. Ninigi was said to be the great-grandfather of Japan's first emperor, Jimu. These gods play a vital role in Japanese history and are some of the most influential figures in her success. Thank you for watching. Until next time.